What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another video on Transformers Rise of the Beast. We're just 7 months away from seeing these iconic characters shut the silver screen for the first time and I for one am having a hard time wrapping my mind around it. Like is this a dream or an actual reality? The robot roster is absolutely stacked with some fan faves from multiple factions and we're gonna go over each character as well as their designs today. Now before we dive into today's topic I ask that you guys give this video a thumbs up. Yeah I know it's a pain getting this request before you even watch the video in its entirety but YouTube's algorithm encourages it. So if you rock with your boy and you know I'm gonna bring you that grade A content then smash that like button. And if by any chance you make it to the end of the video and weren't satisfied with it you can feel free to retract that like and give it a dislike. Just rate the video. But yeah guys, the marketing for Transformers Rise of the Beast is in full effect and we've gotten a chance to see these characters in motion. Everybody is here and some of them have returned from their previous installment Bumblebee with a new coat of paint to fit their earth based modes. Now, although the teaser was met with a fairly positive reception, that still didn't stop people from focusing on the big elephant in the room, which just so happened to be the CGI. That was something that was harped on by myself and I ultimately deduced that it would look a lot better in the final product. It's important to keep in mind that these trailers don't always represent what you'll see in the movies, and wonky CGI is nothing new when it comes to Transformers movie promotions, like this has been a thing since Age of Extinction and The Last Knight. Similar to certain instances in the Rise of the Beast trailer, we've seen shots where the compositing and shading don't quite match the backgrounds these characters are featured in, but those things look a lot better once you see them in the theater. I also want to note that 9 times out of 10, chances are YouTube will cripple the visuals of a video. If you aren't aware, YouTube has this weird thing where it compresses the heck out of videos which reduces the true fidelity. This is why I try my best to upload at 1440p or higher even if it means suffering insanely long render times. And I encourage big name studios to do the same, especially if they're promoting a film that uses a lot of CG. Because on YouTube, 1080p is the new 480p. A subpar low bitrate dud. So yeah, companies like Paramount should really consider uploading these things in 4K. But anyways, there are leaks floating around that have suggested that the VFX team acknowledges these criticisms and they've stated that certain scenes such as that big four standoff with Prime and Primal were in fact unfinished sequences, but fans could rest assured that they would look a lot better once they see it in the movies. So yeah, you can put those worries on the back burner. These guys know what they're doing. But anyways, let's talk about the robot roster. As mentioned earlier, this thing is going to be stacked with different characters, some of which have yet to be seen in any of the promotions. All we do know is that they've been mentioned on IMDB and Wikipedia, so I'm going to do my due diligence of figuring out what their vehicle and beast modes will be as well as the factions they'll be serving in. First one we gotta go over is Optimus Prime. He's the leader of the Autobots and will have his fair share of screen time compared to what he had in Bumblebee, but there's still the off chance that he'll essentially be outshined by another rising star in the form of Arise who will be serving as the buddy robot to the new human protagonist Noah, and I'm not too sure how to feel about that. I'm also not sure how to feel about some of the design choices for this version of Optimus. Obviously the Bumblebee iteration will be serving as the blueprint. That was a very G1 accurate depiction for him and this iteration still carries that overall aesthetic. It's just that it seems to be in this weird place in terms of design choices. What I mean by this is for whatever reason the creative team have decided to make him look more akin to both his Bumblebee and 07 Bayverse design. I pointed this out in my trailer breakdown where I said it looks like they straight up slapped the face of Bay Optimus onto this one. And a majority of you all agree that it did look off. The way the chin placement is just doesn't work for this version. These robot modes are more proportioned compared to those of the alien physiques of the first three Transformers movies. And if you ask me, they should have made their own new face or at least used the right version of the face from the Bayverse films, such as AOE and TLK Optimus which was pointed out by John the Destroyer from the TFW 2005 site. Much like this one, the Optimus from those last two films featured a proportionate body type which also came with a newer and sleeker looking face. And that face would have worked better with this version as opposed to the one they took from the Transformers 07 version. Something else they seem to have taken from 07 Optimus are the hands. His hands were the signature G1 blue color in Bumblebee, but now they're black and look like they did in the first movie. And I'm not sure if it's right to assume this, but I feel like they're reusing these assets to properly animate Optimus Prime's arm blades that we see him using during the big battle in the teaser trailer. It just seems like there's this colliding design choice for Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime, but maybe these changes will grow on me as I watch him in action. Next Transformer we have is Bumblebee. 
That's right, second only to Optimus Prime in terms of fan love and recognition, everyone's favorite Autobot Scout makes a very welcome return in Transformers Rise of the Beast. Following on from the events of his own movie 2018's Bumblebee, Rise of the Beast sees Bumblebee reunited with his fellow Autobots once more as they prepare to defend the Earth from the threat of the new villain Scourge and the Terracons. As you can see in the trailer, he'll be sporting the look that we saw at the end of his self-titled movie, which harkens back to how he looked in the 07 Bay film, but as suspected, he'll most likely receive a visual upgrade in the robot and vehicle department because he'll feature a new off-road alt mode. We've gotten a chance to see how different his robot mode would be based on the Studio Series Deluxe toy for him. Seems like he's going to be a lot bulkier, which I'm guessing is due largely in part to the big off-road tires and other vehicle parts. Word around the campfire is that he will have another look that's said to be a beast mode based off of a listed toy of the same name. And after seeing him meet his supposed demise of Scourge in the teaser trailer, I wouldn't be surprised if he's revived and given this new form. But moving on, the next bout we have is RC. First introduced in the 1986 Transformers movie and last seen in Bumblebee, fan favorite RC makes her welcome return in Rise of the Beast, and thankfully based on the movie's first trailer, it seems that unlike her appearances in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and Bumblebee, where she was merely a cameo, she will be featured as a character throughout this film, and hopefully she'll be an important character to the events of the movie as well. As you see, not that much has changed to her Bumblebee design. If anything, there have been more improvements to make her better represent her G1 counterpart. Besides the Ducati motorcycle parts, she'll now feature her retractable visor, which was noticeably absent from the Cybertron scene in Bumblebee despite her being in an epic shootout. And I know a lot of fans aren't too high on the red parts to this design, but I for one love it. I think it meshes well with the pink, which if I'm not mistaken are her original Cybertronian parts. I also like that she's going to wield the ability to relocate the motorcycle wheels to certain parts of her body. Like it looks like in some scenes they start at the top of her back, but when she springs into action she can shift them down to her legs and use them as rollerblades, which is awesome. But moving on to the next Autobot, we have Mirage. Another one of the original Generation 1 Transformer characters. He makes his long awaited return in this new movie, sporting a look more akin to his original 1984 animation and toy design, after he was last seen sporting a bright red appearance in Transformers Dark of the Moon. Fans of this anti-Athorian Autobot can look forward to him seemingly based on the movie's first trailer playing a bigger role in Rise of the Beast than he did in Dark of the Moon, with several moments in the trailer showing what appears to be a key chase sequence in the movie with him being chased by a squadron of police cars. As mentioned earlier, he's going to be to Noah what Bumblebee was to Sam, and I honestly think they should continue with that style of storytelling. It would be dope seeing each character within the Autobot faction receive a human companion and have the spotlight put on them. That way we get a better feel for how each character acts in each installment as opposed to some of them get left in the back burner. But hey, that's just me. Next up, we have the Autobot scientist and trusted friend and ally of Optimus Prime, Will Jack. He's another fan favorite character dating right back to the original animated series and toy line, and a character fans are sure to be happy to see on the big screen once more. The last we saw of him, he got a very G1 inspired design that totally made up for the very stereotypical nerdy one he got in Dark of the Moon. Unfortunately, however, it looks like we're going back to the goofy Bayformers basics and making him a nerdy stereotype once more. That's right, if you thought he'd get a similar treatment to that of RC where minor tweaks are made to his Cybertronian robot mode from Bumblebee, you were sorely mistaken. Because based on his deluxe class toy, he's gonna be nerdy to the max, complete with obnoxiously big glasses and complimentary suspenders. This thing in my honest opinion blows Dark of the Moon's design out of the water when it comes to cringiness. And it further proves my point when I say that the studio heads still aren't confident enough to stick with the original source material. They rather ride the formulaic tropes of the Bay films and unnecessarily change characters. Will Jack is supposed to be like this Brooklyn Italian grease monkey mechanic with an attitude. He's supposed to have the bulb ears that light up when he speaks, and it seemed like they were going with that approach when we saw him briefly in Bumblebee. He even had a voice acting legend in the form of Steve Bloom, aka Starscream himself providing his voice for the character. But all of that has been thrown out of the window. All we have now is Will Jack in name only and nothing else. The glasses look awkward, not to mention his face just looks weird. It's almost like they took crosshairs from Age of Extinction's face and put square goggles on them. But moving on, the last and final Autobot we have is Stratosphere, a relatively new character to the Transformers movie universe in comparison to his Autobot compatriots. But he's not that new when it comes to movie cross promotions. Although he was absent from all the live action movies, he was however featured in a big mission in the Dark of the Moon video game tie-in. 
He was also featured in the tie-in comics and had his own toy. Stratosphere has the ability to transform into a large cargo plane, making him extremely useful when the Autobots need to get several warriors to a location quickly. The next robot we have is Transit, and I couldn't find much regarding his details. The only thing I could find was the fact that he'll be a transformer of an unknown faction that transforms into a school bus. Another transformer that I tried to find details on but simply couldn't was Reek but it's because he's not a Transformer. He's officially been confirmed to be a human who will serve as a companion of Noah and Elena during their global trek. Moving on to the Beast side of things, we have Optimus Primal. First introduced in 1996's Beast Wars Transformers, Optimus Primal, as his name implies, is the leader of the Heroic Maximals, a race of Cybertronian Transformers who, unlike their Autobot counterparts, take the form of animals rather than vehicles when they transform. As the teaser trailer suggests, he's the one who alerts Optimus Prime to the threat of Scourge before being seen taking part in what looks to be a truly epic battle, likely near the end of the movie. And as the leak suggests, he'll show his distant ancestor Optimus Prime how to properly lead his team. Based on his leaked toys and overall robot mode in the trailer, his design seems to be very faithful to his 96 look. I'd say he's a mix of that and the transmetal aesthetic because he isn't fully covered in fur. You can see the metal components on his body. He has his dual blades that look like they can be combined to form one blade. The only aspects that have yet to be confirmed is if he'll feature a retractable battle mask in which originates from him, and there's also the question if he'll possess the ability to fly. Here's hoping he does. Joining Primal as part of the Maximals is their air reconnaissance expert, Air Razor. First introduced later in the run of the original Beast Wars Transformers animated series, Air Razor proves to be an invaluable ally to the Maximals with a strong family bond to Rhinox and Cheetor, who saved her after her stasis pod was damaged when he crashed on Earth. Similar to her original counterpart, she'll be a Fembot who transforms into a Peregrine Falcon. Ramming his way into the next spot, we have Rhinox. He's a key member of the Maximals in the original Beast Wars cartoon and toy line, and he'll be making his live action debut in this film. While it may seem like Rhinox is nothing more than the Maximal Muscle, there's more to him than meets the eye. On this strong surface, this gentle giant is in fact one of the most intelligent members of the Maximals and incredibly tech savvy. His beast and robot modes look to be very faithful to what they were when he first made his appearance in the 90s. Even though I could get a full glimpse of it in action from the trailer, I can still tell that its robot mode looks very good. The only thing missing is his insanely cool twin chain guns, which I have my fingers crossed for. I'm also hoping that the movie harkens back to the classic moments with him such as allowing certain characters like Optimus Prime will ride on him while he's in beast mode. Next up is the young Maximal Speedster, Cheetor. Cheetor often served as the audience surrogate for all the younger fans out there, with his youthful exuberance and impulsivity often getting him into trouble. He's a fan fave character that many viewers will be glad to see on screen, with at least a handful of epic moments where we see him running alongside Bumblebee, shown already in the movie's first trailer. Moving into that darker territory, we have the evil bot who'll be leading the Terracon charge, Scourge. Traditionally, the right hand and most loyal warrior of Galvatron, it appears that Rise of the Beast of Scourge is either getting a new character backstory or as a brand new character altogether. I recently did a video where I theorized that he might be a corrupted or reformatted version of Optimus Prime from the future, so if you're interested in why I think that, I highly recommend checking out that video. Similar to his 2001 Robots in Disguise counterpart, he'll feature a Peterbilt truck alt mode. Anyway, Scourge is set to be the main antagonist and threat of the movie that brings the Autobots and Maximals together. But given his background in Transformers history, it raises a great question. Is he the real threat, or is he merely the herald of an even greater one? Moving on, we have another evil doer known as Nightbird. In most Transformers lore, she's a human-created robot that often aligns herself with the villainous Decepticons, and although it's not been confirmed yet, it is entirely plausible that we'll see Nightbird created by an early iteration of somebody like Nest as a human-aligned robot that instead turns on her creators, or she'll serve a role similar to that of Scourge. It's still up in the air if she'll be a Decepticon or a Terracon, though. This iteration will feature a Nissan Skyline GTR as the alt mode. As you see by her deluxe class toy, her robot mode will be very G1 accurate. Now last but certainly not least, we have Battletrap. 
In the original Transformers lore, he's somewhat unique amongst the Decepticons in that he's a duocon, meaning that when transformed into his alternate vehicle form, he becomes two separate Decepticons called Battle Slash and Road Trap that he can control to work in cooperation with one another. But in this movie, he seems like he'll be a lot more simple and just possess one personality. And chances are he'll be a Terracon as opposed to just being a Decepticon. Because when you look at his robot mode, specifically at the eyes and mouth, they have this reddish orange glow coming from them similar to what Scourge has. So yeah, this roster will have a lot of interesting robots, some who boast unique designs and others that are less favorable. But that's going to do it for today's video. If there are any more details or robots that are said to be in the movie that weren't mentioned in this video, I'll give you guys an update. But until then, I want to know your thoughts on the current roster we have. Are you digging the lineup? And what are your thoughts on some of the design choices for some of these characters? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I'd appreciate it if you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed the video, I ask that you share with all your friends and family members on all the different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer, signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Yeah!